Hello all, my name is Krishnak and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about random forest. Now in my previous video, I've already put up a video on bagging and I told you that one of the technique that is basically mostly used is something called as random forest. So random forest classifier or a regressor is basically a bagging technique and we are going to discuss both of them in this particular session. So let me just consider and let me just show you some examples. Suppose I have a data set. Now how does random forest basically work? Suppose this is my data set D. Now I told you that in bagging we basically have many base learners, base learner models. So this suppose this is my M1 model, this is my M2 model, this is my M3 model and many more models like this. Okay, so suppose this is my MN model. Now when we are designing this particular model, in the random forest this model is basically called as decision trees. We are going to use decision trees in this model. And as I had explained in the bagging technique, suppose in this particular data set we have D, D records, okay, D number of records and M number of columns. Suppose I have that many co columns, M number of columns. So what we do is that from this particular data set, we will be picking up some sample of rows and some sample of features, okay. So initially I'll pick up some sample of rows, I'll say it as row sampling, row sampling with replacement. I'll just tell you what is that particular replacement term means. So I'm going to take some rows from this particular data set and similarly I'm going to pick up some co columns okay or I can also write this as feature sample so fs okay feature sample with replacement now that is how bagging words works right we will be taking some amount of rows giving to our decision tree one so this is really my decision tree one decision tree two three four n okay so all these decision trees suppose I say that this particular uh, data set is basically d dash now always remember when I say D dash, D dash is always less than D because the number of records from here, I'm just taking a sample of records. And suppose if I consider that I have taken N, uh, suppose small D dash rows and N columns, right? N number of features. So always remember this M will always be greater than N and this D dash, this capital D will always be greater than D dash or small D. I'll say it as small D because the total number of records I have written as D. Okay, so always remember that guys, I am going to take some number of rows, some number of features, give it to my decision tree one. This decision tree one will get trained on this particular data set. Now similarly for my decision tree two, what I'll do is that again, this row sampling will happen with replacement. Now what does with replacement mean is that over here, suppose from this particular record, I have some of the records, some of the records, it may come into this particular scenario also when I'm doing row sampling with replacement. Not all the records will get repeated, but instead I'll be taking another sample of records and give to our decision tree too. So when I'm doing again a row sampling plus feature sampling over here, it may be it may happen that some of the records may get repeated here, some of the features may get repeated here. But we are at least changing many records. Again, we are doing this row sampling, okay? Row sampling and feature sampling. So suppose in this particular case, I had given feature one, two, three, four, five. Suppose in this particular case, I'll give other features like feature one, three, four, five, six, seven, like that. And similarly, that uh, row sampling also happens in the similar way. Now, after doing this row sampling and feature sampling, I'll give this particular records to my decision tree two. This will get trained on this particular data. Similarly, for every decision tree, this thing is going to happen where you are going to perform row sampling and feature sampling, okay? Row sampling and feature sampling. Now this decision tree gets trained on this particular data, okay? And now it will be able to give the accuracy or it will be able to give the prediction. Now the next thing is that whenever I get my test data, whenever I get my test data, suppose I'm giving one record of the test data into this particular decision tree one. Suppose decision tree one, suppose I'm considering a binary classification problem. Decision tree one gives me one. This also gives me one. This gives me zero. And suppose this gives me one, okay? Now, when we see over here, finally, we know that this is my bootstrap. And now, according to the bagging, finally, I have to aggregate it, right? So for aggregating, I'm going to use the majority vote. Now, when I use the majority vote, I know that the maximum number of models that are basically saying the output is like one. So over here, I can see one, two, three models is basically saying it as one. So finally, my output is basically one. Now, this is how a decision uh, random forest basically works. The base learner is decision tree. Now, you need to understand one more thing in this. What is happening if, when we are using many decision trees in this particular random forest? Guys, you should know that decision tree, whenever I use decision tree, it has two properties. Suppose if I'm creating a decision tree to its complete depth. 
So when I do that, it basically has low bias and high variance. I'm going to explain about what is low bias and high variance. Just let me uh, write it down first of all. So low bias basically says that if I'm creating my decision tree to its complete depth, then what will happen is that it will get properly trained for our training data set. Okay, so the training error will be very, very less. High variance, high variance basically says that now whenever we get our new test data, those decision tree, uh, they are prone to give larger amount of errors. So that is basically called as high variance. Okay, so in short, whenever we are creating the decision tree to its complete depth, it leads to something called as overfitting. Okay, so now what is happening in random forest? In random forest, I am basically using multiple decision tree, right? And we know that each and every decision tree will be having high variance, right? But when we combine all the decision tree with respect to this majority vote, what will happen is that this high variance will get converted into low variance. Because now when we are using row sampling and feature sampling and giving the records to the decision tree, the decision tree tends to become an expert with respect to this specific uh, rows or the data set that they have. Okay, since we are giving different different records to each and every decision tree, they become an expert with respect to those records, they get trained on that particular data specifically. And in order to convert this high variance to low variance, we are basically taking the majority vote. Okay, we are not just dependent on one decision tree output. So because of that, this high variance will get converted into low variance when we are combining multiple decision tree. Now, one more advantage you need to understand. Suppose I have 1000 records over here. Now in this 1000 records, okay, suppose I just change, let me just change 200 records. Will this change of the data impact this random forest? Now understand guys, we are doing random sampling, sorry, row sampling and feature sampling for each and every decision tree. Now, if I just change 200 records, now this 200 records will be properly splitted between this data decision tree. So when it is actually splitted, then what will happen is that some of the number of rows or some of the number of records will go to decision tree one, then decision tree two, then three, then four. So this data change will also not make that much impact to a decision tree with respect to the accuracy or with respect to the output. So that is why this high variance, even though whenever we change our data, whenever we change our test data, we will be getting a low variance error or our error rate will be very, very low. Our accuracy will be very, very good. Since we are taking the majority vote, we are doing row sampling and feature sampling giving to the decision trees. Now, this is the most important property of random forest. So random forest actually works very well with respect to most of the machine learning use cases that you're basically trying to do. And I've seen in most of the companies developer have made their favorite, favorite algorithm as random forest. Let it be classifier regressor. One more point I missed out is that suppose if this is not a binary classification, it is a regression problem. What will happen then? Now this particular decision tree, suppose it gives me a continuous value. This also gives me a continuous value. This also gives me a continuous value. For that, what we do is that in regression problem, we either take the mean of all this particular output or the median of that particular output. It depends on the distribution of the output, how the decision tree is basically giving. So usually the main random forest that works with respect to sklearn, it tries to find out the average of this particular output from all the decision trees. And that is much as simple, it, but you need to understand if I just use single decision tree, it will have low bias and high variance. If I want to convert this high, high variance into low variance, I have to basically use multiple decision tree. Apart from that, I also have to use row sampling and feature sampling so that I will be able to convert that into low variance. That basically means our accuracy for the new data or the test data will be very, very good. So this was all about random forest and I've explained you both about classifier and regressor. Only the difference between classifier and regressor is that classifier uses majority vote. I'll just write it down majority vote. Whereas in the case of regression, it will actually find out the mean or the median of the particular output of all the decision trees. Now the hyperparameter that you have to basically work on in that, how many decision trees you have to actually use for the random forest. Okay, how many decision trees you have to basically use. So by with the help of hyperparameter, you will be able to work that out. Okay, so this was all about the video of random forest classifier and regressor. I hope you like this particular video. Please make sure you subscribe the channel, share with all your friends. 
um, please share with all your friends whoever require this kind of help because all the materials over here are free so share with as much as people as you can i'll see you all in the next video have a great day thank you one and all